Cell therapy is using your own immune system to treat many diseases, cancer and now also autoimmune disease. So it begins with a patient. They donate the blood cells, the same ones we worked with uh, during COVID. And now what we're doing is we genetically modify the patient's T cells and then make them so they kill cancer cells. Unfortunately, because cell therapies are made to order for each individual patient, using that patient's cells as the starting material, it's impossible to manufacture cell therapies at scale with the manual methods and bench tab equipment that exist today. As a result, we see about 20% of patients dying on the waitlist, even though they're eligible for FDA-approved cell therapies that are on the market today. Imagine your child has got cancer. There's a drug on the market that would most likely save your child's life, Yet, the child still dies because the industry is supply constrained and can't manufacture sufficient numbers of cell therapies. That's a medical emergency and it's, it's tragic. For T cells, there's no universal like blood cell donor. So we had to work out how to grow your own T cells and then use the genetic modification to make them cancer killers and then give them back to the patients. Over 20 years, we learned how to do that. And then, you know, I, I mentioned we treated our first patients in 2010 and saw these really striking uh, results. Cell therapies were primarily developed by academic labs using benchtop equipment and manual methods, and these methods are impossible to scale. 2017 marks the beginning of the commercialization phase with the first regulatory approvals of CAR T-cell therapies. And all of a sudden, the industry was faced with the challenge of how do you scale up from a few dozen patients in the clinical trial to millions of patients? So at Solaris, we've from the ground up invented, designed, built and tested two flagship technologies to make cell therapy manufacturing scalable and ultimately make it so that all the patients who need access to these life-saving treatments get a cell therapy. The first technology is the cell shuttle and the second technology is the cell cube. Cell shuttle fully automates the entire manufacturing process and it can produce up to 3,000 patient doses annually. CellQ fully automates the quality control process to make sure that that cell therapy that you've produced actually meets all the critical quality attributes. So because we have these highly scalable technologies, we can produce 10 times more cell therapies annually using the same amount of facility space and the same number of employees as a conventional CDMO, while also reducing manufacturing costs by up to 50% and reduce the process failure rates by up to 75%. I look back to 2002 and getting a diagnosis for cancer, there weren't many new treatments. I got on a trial, was on that for eight weeks, and it did nothing to contain my CLL. So I was in a bind. I'd heard about CAR-T in the New York Times a year or two before, and uh, it was by a researcher, Carl June, who had described this new experimental treatment where they were taking T cells, genetically modifying them, and then putting them back in the patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And they had done this on three patients, and all three patients developed a complete remission after this treatment. And they said, it's experimental. We've only done this three times. It worked. You're patient number four, so what do you want to do? And I went for it. I mean, the options <laughs> weren't good at that point. Uh, without something, I, I would die. So we moved to Philadelphia. I got my T cells. That took about 10 minutes. Uh, I was in a room, they, they had a vial of saline, they had an uh, IV in my arm. Uh, they came in with, with uh, a cooler and a, uh, with dry ice in it, and they pulled out a packet that was this big, white. I, I still remember it. And they took this packet and attached it to the line, to the IV in my arm, and they squoze these CAR T cells from the packet into the line and into my arm and said, let us know when you start to get fevers. Sent us back to the hotel we were staying at. Prior to that, I had had a little bit of, uh, of pre-chemo that uh, was required to back off the leukemia uh, before they actually do the CAR T. So I was feeling a little bit under from 
from, from those treatments. But now I had the CAR T product in me. Went back to the hotel, and sure enough, you know, I was just hanging out there. Uh, sure enough, about a week later, I started to get fevers. Of course, it happened on a weekend or a Friday night or something, and so we called and uh, went to the hospital, and they brought us into, it wasn't intensive care, but it was a special ward uh, for cancer patients. Got a room, got a bed, you know, camped out, and um, the CAR T cells started to kill this three to four pounds of tumor load in my body, and my body just started to rage with fevers. So uh, I was in this constant up and down temperature wise, while my heart rate jumped to about 90 beats per minute or more, just constant, just boom, my, my, my body was on fire. Um, and this cytokine release syndrome is what you get if you've got a bad infection or a flu or something, it's like a bad flu all of a sudden rages to try to beat whatever is causing it. The nurses who didn't really know what was happening, because this is one of the first times they had ever seen this, um, you know, were worried I had pneumonia, uh, you know, taking me off to do uh, uh, an x-ray, chest x-ray. And I kept saying, read the trial document. This is supposed to happen. Um, this is the killing of uh, the leukemia within me. At about day four, when I'm going through this, Carl June stopped in my room. He said, I can see you're, uh, you're under the uh, cytokine reaction. And he said something like, you know, gut up, this is working, you know, just gut up and go with it. It's working like we want it to, and we'll uh, let it go. On day eight, the fever broke, and I was feeling better, obviously. I'd lost about 18 pounds in this, these, these eight days. I couldn't eat, but I realized this cytokine release syndrome w was over, and blood work showed that my platelet count was starting to come back up. This CAR-T product had gotten in my bone marrow and cleared it out from all the cancer cells. Over the next several weeks and months, my, my weight came back. Continuous testing showed that I was in complete remission without leukemia. It was a miracle, a miracle of science. In patients with rapidly advancing cancer, I mean, it can be life-saving. Some patients can wait two months, but others cannot. So at this point, we have about 30 trials here at the University of Pennsylvania that are experimental in basically all kinds of cancer and now autoimmune disorders. And for me now, the most gratifying aspect is the new students that I have in my laboratory and that are learning this and making the next kind of cars. For the next several decades, it's going to be an amazing thing to see. It will go to all kinds of medicine, I am confident. I, I mentioned cancers, autoimmunity, I think heart disease. We have active research on that and perhaps even dementia. For more than a decade, the industry has been asking for highly scalable, cost-efficient, automated cell therapy manufacturing technologies. That's what we've built at Solaris. And because of that, I foresee that five to 10 years from now, the technologies that we've invented at Solaris will be the de facto standard for cell therapy manufacturing in the world. So now that we've got this technology, we're proceeding to deploying and operating cell shuttles and cell queues in our smart factories around the world. We currently operate two smart factories in the US, one in California and one in New Jersey. As a next step, we'll be expanding to Europe, and then from there, we'll be expanding to Japan. And in this way, we're building out a global network of IDMO smart factories in an effort to meet the total patient demand for cell therapies in the world. So over the course of the next decade, millions of patients will live because of Solaris and the very important work that we're doing together with our pharma and biotech partners. So we have five grandchildren and had this not worked, I would not have met any of them. They're such, such marvelous, wonderful children and I've gotten to know them. So talk about an impact. <laughs> That's a pretty big one. I'm still here with you know, for them and uh, grateful for it.